I'm building the vanity for my bathroom and what I've got here are the two side panels that I've already cut out. Uh, to do that, the first thing I did was I took a larger sheet of plywood and I cut the ends off close to the right length that I need for these on the miter saw using my extension things there to do that. If you haven't seen the video where I added those supports to my miter saw station, there's a link in the description that will take you to that video to watch it. Then after I had them cut the rough size, I took them to the table saw and I trimmed them down to final size. And then I have one other thing that I needed to cut on these, and that was the toe kick area here. And whenever possible, I like to do these things on a table saw. So I set it up to do that. Uh, these are stop cuts. I cut into the line I marked on the plywood, and then I stopped the saw and waited until the blade stopped before I pulled the wood out. And then to make the other cut, because that block would be loose between the blade and the fence, which is a bad thing, I added an auxiliary fence to my fence so I'd have enough clearance between my fence and the blade to make that cut safely. So I've got these blocks here, I kept them, and what I'm going to do with those is I'm going to add them to the inside of the panel, and what that'll do is it'll allow me to attach the toe kick that goes along the front. This is the outside panel, I'll put it over here out of the way. And this is the inside panel right here, the one that goes against the wall. You can see when I made the cuts on the table saw that there's a slight overcut. Um, in normal circumstances, you want to avoid that kind of thing, but if you were building this thing with open cabinets that you know you would have doors on and shelves inside, the bottom shelf would cover that overcut on the bottom here. And the one that goes this way, you'd never see it anyway because it's underneath that shelf as well. But since I'm putting drawers only in this cabinet, it's not an issue at all. I'm using the same type and thickness plywood for the toe kick as for the rest of the cabinet here. So I'm using that as a spacer to space these blocks. And of course, being distracted because I'm filming this, I put it on the wrong side. So I gotta pull it off and move it to the other side. Wow. Mistakes happen, what can you do? Fix them and move on, that's what you gotta do. All right, next thing I need to do is cut the stretchers that um, make up the toe kick and the stretcher above that, and then one for the two for the back, actually, that will attach it to the wall and keep the side panels the correct distance apart. And for simplicity, I made all of those three and a half inches, and I'll just cut them from this piece of plywood. Next, I need to cut them to the final length, which is uh, 33 and a quarter, but I need to trim off the end first. And I'll do that here on the miter saw, then I'll flip the pieces around and cut the other end. Now, once again, I've kept those blocks that I cut off to add to the side panels here, so that I'll be able to fasten those stretchers like this nailing through the back and gluing it on rather than coming through the side so that the nails won't show. So once again, I'm just gonna use glue and a couple of one and a quarter inch brads to hold those on.
Okay, with those blocks added, it's time to start some actual assembly by adding these stretchers that I talked about. I'm going to glue these in along with some longer brads. I switched out the nails to one and three quarters so that I'll have a better hold. And then it's just to add the other two in the same way. And then I've got one more to add along the top there at the front. Okay, so the next thing is to get the other side panel on. I've already added glue to the locations where the stretchers are. Okay, now I can flip it over, right side up, here, and I've got one more stretcher to add, and it's the one that goes across the bottom here, and that goes in there, but first I gotta get some glue in there, mainly on this toe kick that goes across. A little on the side here, certainly can't hurt. Well, to get this in, what I like to do, so I get some glue on each end, is I'll start that end in, push it into the glue, and then I'll start this end in, but I'll actually put it all the way in this time. Spread that apart a little bit. Put it down, make sure it's flush in the front, because that's what's important. And then I can draw a line here. And now because this side is against the wall, I'm going to fire a couple of nails in here because they'll never be seen. And I'll leave the other end alone because I've got a face frame that goes on here afterwards and that'll really add some support over there as much as I need anyway. All right, speaking of face frame, that's the next thing that I need to build. So I'll set this down on the floor here. Out of the way, let the glue dry while I make the face frame from this piece of maple. I need four pieces in total. Three of them are inch and a half wide and one of them is two inches wide. So I'll make this first cut at one and three quarters and then I'll make the next cut at two and a quarter and then I can cut those roughly to length at the miter saw. I want to leave enough on the ends here to trim it off to get rid of any snipe that might happen when I'm plating the parts. All right, now that they're cut to length, I'm going to take that edge that I already ripped, which is nice and flat actually, holding it down here on my table so I can see that it's pretty good. I'm going to reset my saw, uh, my fence I mean, to just a little bit more, like a sixteenth of an inch more than one and a half for these ones. And I'm going to make a rip cut on these, but I'm going to hold it in tight against the fence as I push it through. And that way the side that I'm ripping here will be parallel to the side that's already ripped. And then I'll do exactly the same thing with the other ones to get those to the right width. Next I want to make a squaring cut on one side. I've reset my fence to 15 16 And I've raised my blade so I can make that cut in one pass on the pieces that are an inch and a half wide. On the two inch one, I'm going to cut that in two passes. Okay, that's one side cut. I'm going to reset the fence to 13 16 That gives me enough to plane off when I go to plane it. What I want to wind up with here is stock that's exactly three quarters of an inch. Now that I've got all the parts playing to the right thickness for the face frame, I'm going to cut them to length. I'm going to start by trimming two inches off the end. Like I said, I want to get rid of any possibility of snipe on the end here.
And then I can flip it around and cut the other end to length, which is 26 and 3 8. These two pieces make up the, I guess you could say, styles of the face frame. They're the vertical parts. And before I cut the rails, I want to actually attach this one. This is on the outside or the side panel of the cabinet, the part that shows. And I want it to be absolutely flush with this face of the plywood here. And to fasten that, I'm going to use biscuits and glue. And that's it. I'm not going to use any nails. The main thing that I'm looking for here though is to get the glue so that it doesn't squeeze out to the front here because I want to stain this cabinet so I'm going to put it on the inside towards the inside here just a single bead now I'm also going to add a clamp right here in the middle hold it together until the glue sets but about a half an hour to dry. I went and had lunch while the piece on the front here was dry. I also unplugged the tip and filled up my glue bottle so that's ready to go. And the plug tip was getting on my nerves. Right now I'm adding edge banding to the top of the panel here and that's to cover that mainly because of the way this cabinet is the top is actually the sink and it comes right out flush with the edge here. You know, you might be able to see in there and I don't want to be able to see particle board. Also, the edge banding here will help to waterproof that edge. So I'm just going to iron that on on both sides and then trim it off flush. All right, now I've got the bottom rail, you could say, and I've already trimmed the end off clean. I'll put that over against this style and now I can get a very accurate measurement here to the inside face of this part of the cabinet right here. And then what I'll do is I'll cut the top piece that at the same length as well. I've flipped the cabinet upside down so that I can attach the bottom rail first. I've made marks where the biscuits will go. And I'll just cut those now. Now I need to get some clamps on this until this dries as well. But I'm not going to stop and wait for it. I'm going to get the other parts done. All right, once again, I've got the cabinet put up on the table saw. I've got the biscuit slots cut for the last piece here. Before I attach this one, I cut the slot in the end for the one that goes here. A little bit of glue on each thing and put it together. Okay, one last thing to do, and that's add a clamp across the top here to pull it in tight. And I'm going to wrap this one up here. Next time, I'm going to be finishing this cabinet. Like I said earlier, I'm going to be staining it, so I'll be going through how I do that. 